I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. To him I owe sin and left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Uh, good afternoon or morning or evening whenever it is that you are listening to this uh, program or watching this but I uh, would like to send the whole program out today to Brother Brad Harris and uh, thankful for one of the best friends I've ever had and um, pray that uh, he had a good birthday yesterday and uh, that he'll have a good day today as well send the program out to him and to his wife um, Gina and to their daughter Allie. I send the program out to my mother today and to Duck Run Community Church. Thank you for your support in the uh, newsletter that we put out. Uh, and um, for those of you that watch this program or listen to it, I pray uh, that you will continue to uh, pray for us in the work that we do here as we try to minister. We had 47 folks here this morning in our service. Uh, it's kind of, so funny, I met a fellow this morning um, that I have never met in my life. And uh, he said he was from uh, the Portsmouth, Ohio area. And then he said from the Waverly, Ohio area. He said basically Pike County, but he said Portsmouth, as do I, because people will know where that is sometimes if they've traveled through. But uh, Eric Trent his name he is working here and in, in the little river area and so send the program out to him as well the lord knows i'm guilty of living my life like there's always tomorrow making things right our days are numbered like the hairs on our head. No man knows the hour to shake hands with death. You don't have to go on and live up in glory. Excuse me. 
Still trying to get this throat cleared from last week, but or two weeks, uh, but uh, it's coming along a little bit. So we'll send this song out to um, um, to all those. Uh, we've done a lot of baby dedications in the time that I've been a pastor, and I usually use this song for that. I know Michelle uh, and John Comer used it for theirs, um, uh, different different children, um, but. Um, just a song that always reminds me of the reason I uh, was drawn closer, of course, uh, to the Lord as a, as a young married father was uh, uh, I knew that I was going to raise children and they needed to hear about the Lord. And if I wasn't going to live it in front of them, how was I going to tell them about it? And so uh, that's what this song talks about. I saw two little feet walking in my footsteps I heard a little voice asking things I didn't know I touched some tiny fingers reached out for if she's gonna follow me I need to know just where I'll go If she's following me Then Lord I need to follow you If I'm a living example I need a whole lot of your life If the steps I take Will influence her forever I can't afford to lose Lord, help me make it right I've wasted so after worldly treasures every passing day you knocked at my heart's door still I gave you rejection you just kept right on loving you sure got my Daddy's little girl If she's following me The Lord I need to follow you If I'm a living example I need a whole lot of you If the steps I take will influence her forever, I can't afford to lose. Lord, help me make it right. I can't afford to lose. Lord, help me make it All right, I want to try a song that I have not sang for years. I actually forgot about this song. And something was said the other day that brought my mind uh, to the words of it or to the remembrance of the title of it. So I wrote that down and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get through some of it. But my dad used to sing this song. I would sing it with him and uh, let's see if we can do it. A little boy was at a neighbor's house one day when suddenly his face grew sad and still 
Two men were in discussion And Tommy heard one say There is no God And Jesus isn't real Please don't tell my daddy Jesus isn't real Please don't make him like he was before Since Jesus saved my daddy He's good to me and Bill He don't hurt our mommy anymore He used to come home drinking Little Tom went on to say And Bill and me would have to run and I But now we are so happy When he comes home every day And we don't have to hear Our mommy cry Please don't tell my daddy Jesus isn't real Please don't make him like he was before Since Jesus saved my daddy He's good to me and Bill He don't hurt our mommy anymore know that the Lord makes a change he doesn't force it on anybody but he makes a change and he can make a change uh, in your life today if he's not done so if you've not allowed him to do so we're going to sing this song and um, there's one of the ladies here at the church that likes this song really well I never sang it until she asked me one time if I knew it and so I've tried it and sang it for a couple other people since but we'll go ahead and give it a shot here and then we'll get into the message <coughs> Excuse me. David and Tracy Eichel, I will send this song out to you today. I know you're faithful to watch this. Shannon McMillan, no doubt something that you could tear up on the piano or sing with me on, uh, but we'll send this out to you as well. The Carter sisters, uh, Kelly, um, I love y'all. Karen, Ronnie, anyone that would watch this, That uh, 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 Dave and Claudia, um, my cousin Jenny. <laughs> Send it to you as well. Patty Blevins. And then those 
hope in this life if you don't have hope in that if you had hope the apostle paul said in this life only you would be of all men most miserable so it's more than just the hope in this life more than just the confidence the faith the trust that we put in the lord in this life but it is knowing that he loves us he cares for us because he lives we can live when we leave this world we will be in a better place with him I want to um, attempt to preach to you today from the book of um, Genesis. And in uh, chapter 18 of Genesis, we find the scripture that I believe is starting in, in, in chapter 15, I believe is where the beginning of this is. But we find that uh, Abraham and Lot, Lot uh, is Abraham's nephew, and there is a... Um, there's a falling out between their herdsmen. And uh, they there's a difficult thing going on here that um, Lot has cattle and herds and Abraham does as well. And their, their men aren't getting along. And uh, they, they're always fighting and carrying on. And Word of God doesn't go into great detail about that, but it does say that there was some conflict there. And so Abraham said to Lot, I'll tell you what I want you to do. He said, you look around and you pick what you want, the area you want to uh, have your cattle in, have your uh, livelihood, and I'll take what's left. And of course, uh, going by sight uh, and not by faith, um, the scripture says that Lot looks and he looks towards the well-watered plains of Sodom. And when he does that, um, he, he sees, uh, no doubt green and, and, uh, shrubbery and, and all that stuff. And he thinks, wow, this is the best place right here. Are you sure about this? And Abraham says, you pick, I'll take what's left. And so a uh, lot of course does, he pitches his tent towards Sodom. Well, later we find, uh, and if you've read this story, you know, that the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, that the Lord, uh, destroyed it with fire because the sin of the city was great and it came up into his ears and um, and in verse uh, in chapter 18 and verse 20 we find that there's a conversation shortly after the conversation that uh, Abraham has with the angel of the Lord about uh, that she is going to his wife Sarah is going to have a child then um, it is mentioned that since Abraham is um, 
playing a big role in this. We Do you think it's important that we let him know what's going on? And of course the answer was yes. So in verse 20 it says, And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done also altogether according to the cry of it, which is coming to me and out, and whether or not I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, What wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and the wicked that be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. So Abraham goes on to say, Now, I know I have an audience with you now, and I'm speaking to you, and <laughs> haven't fell over dead, so how about, how about if there's 45? Will you spare it for 45? And of course, God says, I'll spare it for 45. Okay. He comes back. He's like an auctioneer. Instead of going up, he's coming down. He says, well, how, how about if there's 40? And what is, what, is, what is Abraham doing here? When we look at this scripture, I think, uh, and I've preached on this uh, text before, I remember being in a little church called Grace Chapel back in uh, Ohio on Dry Run when Brad Harris was the pastor there. And Brother Brad, I know you'll remember this as well. He had a revival with a gentleman that had come uh, that pastored there at Otway before Brother Lawrence Rhodes. And he spoke on this text. And uh, I'll never forget um, the way that it, that it made me feel to know that there was somebody that intercedes for me and somebody that intercedes for you. Because when the scripture says that, that the men turned and they walked away and they set their face toward Sodom, it says, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. You see, Abraham didn't walk away. Although God knew how many people there in Sodom and Gomorrah would be destroyed, he knew who was righteous and he knew who wasn't. And so as he knows this and he knows all things today, sometimes uh, we don't understand why things happen and we can't see why things are happening. And, and so here is uh, Abraham. I don't think he's trying to, well, I can't really say he's not trying to bargain, trying to make a deal, but he is pleading before God, because he has family there. I've said this many times, and I don't mean to be offensive with this, but if I turn on the television, and here in Myrtle Beach, there's always someone, you turn on the news, the next morning there's always someone who was beat, raped, shot, stabbed, whatever. And so if I were to turn on the television tomorrow morning and hear that that happened to somebody, I could feel for them, and I could pray for them. But if I turn on the television or got a call from a family member and said that this had happened to them, my prayer would be more earnest. And you say, well, Brother George, you're not supposed to be that way. Yes, but uh, we're human. And I understand that if that is flesh of my flesh. And so when there's something going on with somebody in my family, my prayer uh, really becomes earnest. And here he is standing. As the men went, God knew destruction was going to come. But Abraham stands yet before the Lord. And as I spoke to this congregation of 40-some people here this morning, I had the feeling that there were mothers and fathers in here that had, at a time in their life, been an intercessor for their child, have cried out, God, please don't take them. Don't take them now. God, please take this addiction away from them. God, please help them with whatever it is that they're going through. God, please give them help and give them strength and give them insight uh, that their life could be so much better. God, please turn this around. I walked on the beach yesterday, my wife and I, and I don't know if it shows in here. I've tried to do some things to calm the lighting down so the glare off the, the glasses you'd be able to see better, but uh, but almost looked like a, a, a vacation or today because we went down and spent about four hours on the beach yesterday, and that changes the color of your skin, of course. It changes the complexion a little bit, and as we were down there, my wife and I both are sitting there. We're praying for family. We've got some things that we are uh, been praying about and some things that we are interceding for family over and in that period of time i stand there and look at that vast ocean that there's no way in the world i can even imagine how god can speak and all these things come into existence but as i stand there i'm reminded of the little song he's got the whole world in his hands 
He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. He's got you and me, sister. He's got the little tiny baby. He's got all the problems that you can face in this life. In his hands, he sees and he knows. Now, don't get me wrong. He won't make us choose anything. He didn't make Lot leave Sodom, but he gave him a choice. And the choice is given to our family, our friends, the people that we love. The choice is strong and is clear today. You have a choice to choose what's right. This day it is set before you. You choose what is right. You choose whatever you want to do. But when you choose what you want to do, remember that there's always a price to be paid. It has been said many times, and people jokingly will say this sometimes, but uh, it is the truth. If you are... If you are going to dance, they say, you got to play, you got to pay the fiddler. Well, if you're going to live life a certain way, there are consequences for that. And if you live without God and you die without God, as heartbreaking as it may be, and so I can't believe a God of love would send anybody to hell. No, you're not getting what I'm saying if you believe that. If you think that, I'm saying you have a choice. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So you don't have a choice in that. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We've sinned. But then when we hear the gospel and it is delivered to us, it's important that we ask the Lord to not only forgive, we go to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Just like I preached last week about the prodigal son, I'm sorry I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight. No longer worthy to be called thy son. And then we come to him and say, Lord, forgive me. God knows our needs. He knew Lot's needs. He knew Abraham's heart. He knew Abraham's desire. He knows my heart today. He knows my desires today. For all those that may watch this program, he knows what you're going through. He knows the times of... Um, affliction that come that you wish you could change, but you cannot change. So what do you do? I was standing, shaking hands with folks as they're going out of our church today. My sister said, pray for me tomorrow, pastor. I have this test and I have that test. and I believe everything's going to be all right, but if not, they say that's a cop-out. Oh, what better card to have up your sleeve, right? I believe I'm going to be all right, but if not, I believe this situation is going to be all right, but if not, one of my favorite songs probably is the song that just says, I know that you can fix this. I know that I could call to you right now and you'd take care of it, but even if you don't, even if you don't. So what do you do? You stand yet before the Lord. You continue to pray, you continue to plead. Can you make them change their mind? No. A lady also said to me as she was leaving, I spoke on this same text this morning. She said, I got to thinking while you were preaching, does that mean that I didn't pray enough? But you know what? You can say a prayer in an earnest, honest, sincere prayer. And years after you're dead and gone, that prayer can still be answered. Because God doesn't forget that prayer. You can pray a million times or you can pray one time. But the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, the scripture says. So what do you do now? You stand yet before the Lord. Whatever it is you're praying about, you stand there before him and just continue to pray. God, I know that it's not that you're deaf, that you didn't hear me. I understand you heard me. God, I'm just pleading. I'm praying. I'm interceding for my loved ones and for my family. What a blessing it is to be able to do that for our family. But that's a blessing that sometimes those folks will never understand until we're long gone. That we love them enough to cry out to God for them. Jesus paid it all along to him I owe sin had left the crimson stain he washed it white as snow God bless you until next week <laughs>